Hello guys, this is Dustin, and welcome to this episode just kind of covering uh, what what the NIM programming language is. Um, I wanted to make this episode for a little while now just because I've been working with this uh, programming language NIM for a little over like a year and a half now, serious, like kind of seriously working with it. Well, maybe a little under. And it, it has kind of changed the way I program. It's kind of like made me rethink a lot of things. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. It really is. Like... Uh, so I, I'm just going to be covering in this episode, kind of covering what NIM is, why you guys might want to use it, or at least check it out. Um, so yeah, what is NIM? So NIM is a programming language, is a compiled programming language that is meant for, you know, to be kind of used in the same environment as, here, let me let me move this down, uh, kind of the same environment as like the C programming language. Um, and yeah, this is their homepage, nimlang.org. Uh, but yeah, this kind of covers all the awesome things that it does. It compiles to C and C++ or JavaScript, so it uses those as like a backend, as kind of like the assembly code, uh, and then in turn that gets compiled to whatever platform you're looking at, which is actually really nice because that means you can use many, many different C libraries and uh, already developed C++ code uh, in your project, which is really, really useful, especially since NIM uh, is a language that hasn't even hit 1.0 yet. So it is. It does have a kind of a small community, but it's a very devout community that of people that and developers and stuff like that. Um, over here on the right side, you can kind of see a little bit of a a little taste of Nim, and this is why I think Nim is so fantastic. It it is one of the uh, only programming languages that that I really think um, captures the feeling of a dynamic programming language like Python or Lua or something. Yet it, it's a compiled language. It really merges and uh, uh, merges the two environments in a very amazing way. Um, but yeah, you can come over here, kind of read some more stuff about the NIM programming language. Uh, you can go to over here on the features page, and you can see some of the features. Here's some more stuff. It has a really powerful type system that is very simple yet very comprehensive. Um, you can write very strict object-oriented code, or you could writ write very like strict uh, functional code. It is really uh, um, open to all different different paradigms of programming. Um, it has kind of an interesting uh, like feature for exporting variables. This basically says this is a public uh, field. You know, yeah, it, it says it over here in the comments and stuff. And you can do this throughout your code. Like, you can export um, just about any part of your module and uh, and hide any part of your module. So it's, it's really interesting how it works. Um, it is garbage collected, though that is optional. You can turn it off. So for people that are looking into developing games, a lot of times you don't want a garbage collector uh, just because you don't want your game world to, to pause while it cleans up all the garbage. Though, uh, from what I've heard, the garbage collector in NIM is actually very good. And from what I've used, it is very good. And it actually, uh, unlike a lot of other programming language, languages, it doesn't really like pause your game while it collects garbage. It kind of does some other nifty stuff. I, I don't know enough about it to really talk much about it though. But you can turn it off and actually have a full-on manage your, all your memory, as long as all the libraries don't invoke the garbage collector, of course. Uh, and since NIM compiles to C, it is actually very fast. Um, the C that is that is compiled, though, isn't very readable. You can go in and kind of see what's going on. And every once in a while, I do do that, just so I can kind of get a grasp of how it works. And, you know, since I do a lot of, like, C and NIM, like, uh, I, I use a lot of C code from NIM. So I kind of need to know how it's, how it's compiling and all that in some cases. But yeah, it also compiles to JavaScript. You got like a DOM uh, object and you can kind of create like anything you want, like full full on web apps. So I think that's really cool. But yeah, um, so yeah, NIM is completely community driven. It's not like the Go programming language and the like Rust programming languages. Go is mainly backed by Google and Rust is backed by Mozilla. Um, but this is actually backed just by the community. There's no huge entity. And while that is also a really good thing, it's not the best thing. It also means that the programming language is kind of always in flux, right? There's no, the main creator definitely has like a vision for it, but he, it's basically backed by a giant community. So it hasn't even hit 1.0 yet, but don't let that actually scare you off. It's actually very stable and very practical to use right now. And it probably won't change all that much from the next uh, till once it hits 1.0. Um, yeah, and one one of the coolest things is that uh, the compiler is very batteries included. Um, for example, like 
it uh yeah the, the compiler itself has a built-in debugger built-in documentation generator built-in pro uh, profiler and a built-in package manager kind of like uh npm or that node uses you can just download a package and what's really cool is it's actually like decentralized it's a decentralized package manager so you can actually install a package from github uh, so you can just take your github link and say uh, nimble install and then paste that in and it will install it into your uh, into your code base which is awesome um yeah so i i really think this is really interesting i, I wish more programming languages actually embrace this because what what piece of software knows your code better than you know the compiler like I, I really think that the compiler should uh, generate documentation you know it should profile your code and it should debug your code it just makes it makes sense to me at least um, yeah so here are kind of some of the list of uh, uh, packages that you can use in them this is a very this isn't a very comprehensive list it just has some of the stuff you can use and as you can see like one of the biggest si uh, downsides to NIM is that it's not that well known and it, mostly because it's so like it, it's kind of new it's been in development for like years but it it hasn't hit 1.0 um, and it's been kind of hard to use up until very like recently within a couple years or so but uh, so yeah you, you will have to write a lot of code yourself um, especially when it comes to game development, there's not a lot to choose from. Uh, like there are, but they're not well documented. They're not like backed by a lot of people. Um, so it's kind of hard to work with. So a lot of times it's actually just easier to write your own code. But yeah, th there's also web development frameworks because you can compile jo to JavaScript. That's huge. It means you can build huge web apps and do some really cool stuff. Um, and Jester is just one of a few really good uh, web frameworks um, oh yeah and one thing I wanted to point out real quick before we move on is that it is being developed at like such an astonishing rate like the the standard library is huge with tons of really really powerful things that not a lot of programming languages provide you and uh, one of which is for I, I like I'm building kind of like a compiler myself in in actual NIM and NIM has its own like tokenizing you know function just built into the string library, which is really cool. Like, not a lot of programming languages do that. Like C does, but it doesn't. What what Nim does that's different than C is it actually keeps the delimiters, and it, it's really interesting. Um, and one thing else is the Nim compiler is completely written in Nim, so it's completely it bootstrapped its way up till it's like compiling itself, and I think that's just awesome. I think a, a programming language has really like made it once it can compile its own compiler. Um, okay, so yeah, over here uh, is the NIM tutorial. You can just look this up. This is the main documentation, and this makes learning NIM very easy. It like I, I I'm thinking about making a tutorial series, but it, it's gonna be basically just reading this because it's so comprehensive. There's tons. It's very easy to read, um, and it covers so much. And this is just part one, and it covers all of this. Um, yeah, so very cool. Um, and for the last part, I just kind of want to cover some of the code that I've written and kind of show you what NIM kind of looks like. So again, there's not a lot of good 2D frameworks out there. So for NIM, I mean, there, there are, but they're kind of hard to use. They're not very well maintained and documented. So I decided to go about writing my own. Um, and yeah, this is kind of what I've gotten. And uh, this is, I think this is a good example of uh, that to show you guys because this has a lot of C and NIM interop. So I'm calling uh, OpenGL code from NIM, uh, from NIM, but it's a, of course, a C, uh, it's the C code that it's actually calling. Um, so yeah, what, what's really cool is that NIM keeps, it's, when you call a C function, you call it just about exact same way you would in C. It's the same name, there's no, you know, like namespace stuff. You can't add a namespace, but and all that, uh, it, it's different. It's very easy to, uh, write C like writes use C code in in NIM. It has a very powerful uh, foreign function interface that makes binding your C code very easy and it also uh, not built into the compiler but it's, there's a separate compiler that can translate uh, C code into NIM which is really really useful you can kind of translate your whole C uh, repository into NIM and then slowly work your way through that file and actually make it work like you would expect but yeah so here's some rendering uh, I can show you kind of it compiling. 
Um, it's a very fast compile. It, it compiles to C. Um, of course, that wasn't a full compile, but it's incremental. So it will only compile what it needs to compile. So it's actually very fast. Um, and as you can see, I'm just doing some, I haven't worked on this project in a while, but it's just doing some simple 2D rendering using OpenGL. So yeah, and uh, finally, it's the programming language I'm working on, just kind of for academic reasons. It also generates C code and stuff like that. But yeah, you can kind of get a taste of of NIM. I'm not a great NIM programmer yet. I, I'm very kind of a beginner at it. But yeah, it's very clean. It's very easy to read. It's easy to document. And it, it kind of uses this Python style where it doesn't use brackets or anything. Um, but what I, th I think it does things a lot better than Python because it, it's a lot more flexible. You can do things in a single line. You can format your code in a bunch of different ways. And it, and it just works. <laughs> a lot of times it just works. And uh, yeah, I, I could go on and on about what's, what NIM has and all that. Like for instance, uh, like first class functions. So all functions are basically objects. You can pass them around. You can, uh, I, you can create closures and stuff like that. It has an extremely powerful macro system that works on the AST level. So if you're familiar with like Lisp or Clojure, I believe Clojure has it. Um, most like Lisp-like programming languages. Um, Rust now does it. I believe Go does. Um, yeah, basically, instead of like in C, the preprocessor works on the text level, so you can get a lot of bugs. It's not type safe, anything like that. This works on the AST level, so it is type safe. Uh, it's it's compiled at compile time right so like all your compile time expressions are compiled at compile time and that saves a huge amount of overhead and all that and it, the cool thing is it's not like in C++ you have to use kind of like a weird macro language it's not really C++ it is but everything has to be kind of I don't know very very static and it's hard to write C++ uh, dynamics or templated C++ code um, and it co slows down the compilation time like crazy it, it really does. But in NIM, you write NIM that writes NIM, basically. So it's all the same language. It's all, ex it, and it can get away with that because inside the NIM compiler is also a NIM interpreter, meaning you can actually interpret NIM code from inside NIM. And I haven't actually worked with that too much, but the possibilities for game development, like that is huge. And this, this programming language is, is definitely targeted for uh, game developers and stuff like that. Like, it, it has a lot of features that would make game development really interesting, one of which is that it can interpret itself. Um, and I believe it's called NIMScript. It, it's not a full, like, full interpretation, but you can pretty much just copy the NIMScript, paste it into a file, and compile it, and then you turn your dynamic code into very fast compiled code. But yeah, you can work with it just like a scripting language. Um, a lot of times game engines will use, like, Lua or Python or, like, AngelScript or something like that. And it's really hard going from a dynamic programming language, especially like Lua, to a compiled language like C++. Because like, for instance, Lua arrays start at 1. So a lot of times you kind of have this mindset, you know, like when you go from C++ to Lua, that arrays start at 0, and you can cause weird bugs. Um, and also a lot of times you want to take your dynamic code when you don't need it to be dynamically like recompiled and stuff like that. When you don't need that, you want to make it really fast. So a lot of times you have to translate that into C++, and it's just a pain. So in NIM, you just write everything in NIM, and it just works. It's awesome. But yeah, um, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about. I just really love this programming language. I think there's a lot of really interesting use cases for it. I think it's useful for just about anyone. Um, you can use it like a, like you would a scripting language, where you just open up a file, type in some code, and say run, and it'll just run it. Um, so it, it's a very, very nice programming language. I highly recommend it for you guys to check out. But yeah, if you guys are interested, I can make a tutorial series if you guys want to learn more about it. Um, so just let me know, and I hope you enjoyed this. If there's something I missed, let me know, and maybe I'll do a, uh, a second video or something like that. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.